It might not be her father. It's your someone's. You trust me? On this edition of Nerd News, Last of Us made the news last week. And it's probably not the kind of news you'd be expecting. We'll talk about that. It's official. Spider-Man Across the Spider-Verse live action Miles Morales movie. It's coming. I'll give you the details. Madam Web drops next week. And critics are not feeling it. We'll talk a little bit about that and give you an intro to those who don't know who Madam Web is. Two Sony stories on this platform today, ladies and gentlemen. Huh. Last but not least, my main man Carl Weathers passes away. We'll talk about him and what he meant to the fandom of us nerds. All that starts right now. I'm up early for the dealers come out. Everybody is outside till the killers come out. You ain't eating, you just act full. I'm in pack full. Dozen funerals in a month. I got that whole. I will give it to niggas in all rap forms. Ignatius out right now on all platforms. Well, what's happening, to everybody? It's the all knowing, all loving, all feeling, all seeing, all powerful. It's damn all everything. Sexy as hell host of this channel, me, Lamont Tyson, a nerd who loves nerd content. And we're going to go ahead and dive right on into this, starting with what's going on with The Last of Us. Last of Us last year in 2023 was one of HBO's biggest shows. And it recently made the news coming from the platform Snacks created by Robin Hood. Check this out. Not only was it one of HBO's most watched shows, but it was the most pirated show in all the world last year. Why is that important? Because piracy since 2019 has been going on a rise. And ladies and gentlemen, it is nothing but an outcry from people who love to watch TV that these damn streamers are losing their effing mind. The prices of every streamer has gone up and in some cases tripled and doubled. Netflix went up. Disney went up. They're all going up. And the fans are like, what do we do? And if you guys can remember way back in the day when this was happening with music, you had um, Livewire, Napster, and some others that was easy to get pirated music. And then along came Pandora, which helped leverage the price so that people would pay and not be pirating the stuff and having to get risk viruses and stuff like that on your computer. Well, when it comes to TV, you don't have to worry about that. Now, listen to what Hollywood claimed they lost. Hollywood said they lost $113 billion because of piracy last year. And there are some pirate sites out there that are charging $5 to $10 a month. And one of these sites has 3 million people paying that rate. Considering there's not a whole lot Hollywood can do. I mean, they can go after the pirate sites, but because a lot of the servers and what may have you are offshores, it's not a lot they can do. This is what they can do. Lower the damn price. And ladies and gentlemen, what they're trying to do to lower the price is offer ad tier services. Now, mind you, it might sound really weird that when we look at these Hollywood studios, we think about all the money they're bringing in. We don't really think about what they're paying and they're losing in expenses. We just see... You have these actors making tens of millions of dollars. Your company is worth tens of millions of dollars. Why the hell is you trying to squeeze people for so much money? I'm on the side of they do need to do something to reduce the rate. And a lot of us are not going to like having an ad tier service so that they can still make money. But I don't see how that would help with the piracy because... People, when you get your pirate stuff, you're not having to deal with ads. And the other barrier that was uh, typical with piracy was that people didn't have ease and access to get it. Hell, nowadays it's easy as hell to get it. If these streamers really want to solve the piracy problem, you're going to have to find a way to make your stuff cheaper. Whether that means that you start from the top and that CEO who's making $30 million a year, you cut his damn rate down to 10 
and then some of these top actors that you're paying 10 million, whatever, you cut that shit down to five so that the consumers can afford this stuff and then you'll get them off the piracy streams. But I want to hear from you guys. Let me know what you think. Then we got the Miles Morales Spider-Man story. And I'm so glad to hear that Sony is about to step their game up and bring this young man into a live action. Donald Glover had something to say about it. Let's hear what he had to say. Probably going to be like a Miles Morales uh, live action eventually. Mm. And I think they're probably more concerned with me being like Prowler and that or something mm. like that. I'm too old to be Spider-Man now. Like a Spider-Man can't have like, you know. I don't you know, know. That could be interesting. Only if he dies or something like that. Yeah. I can't be like, you know, I'm talking about like, I need to roll out my IT band. You had a cameo you know? in Spider-Man Across the Spider-Verse. Do you think that this was Sony's way of apologizing for not casting you as Spider-Man? Uh, no. <laughs> I don't think they even thought about it. With Donald Glover coming back, to reprise his role as Prowler in the live action, I, it makes me think that there is going to be a crossover between Sony and Marvel because if you guys recall, Donald Glover was Prowler in one of the Marvel crossover Sony Spider-Man movies. Take a look at this. It's pretty ballsy. I don't want those weapons in this neighborhood. I got a nephew who live here. I hate this dude, man. Yeah, sorry, Miles. I'm not, I'm not going to make it. Yeah, I'm just stuck. So, yes, ladies and gentlemen, it's happening and it's actually in production right now. The announcement came during the premiere of Spider-Man Across the Spider-Verse by Amy Pascal, who, who is a producer for Sony. And they had to do this because Spider-Man Miles Morales in their cartoon universe has been so popular. I mean, the movie has been so good, both of them that it's almost been better than some of the live action stuff that was already done. So it sounded to me like this was just gonna be a natural fit. Um, you're bringing in not only a character that is beloved, but you're bringing in a minority character who's gonna bring in extra fans just for that. And if they can keep his story as good as they've done with the animated, Sony and its expansion of the Spider-Verse is gonna really have something on their hands which leads me to what they don't have on their hands that's looking too good, which is Madam Web. But before I get to Madam Web, please post your comments. Are you excited for a live action Miles Morales? Hell, I am if they can make it as good as the animated. Sticking with this Sony universe, we now go to Madam Web. Oh boy, which drops next week, February 14th on Valentine's Day. Ticket pre-sales are low as hell. I mean, literally, they down there in hell that low. And critics and folks who specialize in understanding whether a movie's going to do good or not are not saying a whole lot of good about this film because there ain't that many trailers. There's an embargo that ain't been lifted. It is not looking too good. And it stars my girl, Dakota Johnson, daughter of my man from Miami Vice, the old school Miami Vice, who I actually, I absolutely love Dakota Johnson. And if you didn't know the lure of Madam Webb, here's a video from my people over here at Nerd IQ that's gonna break down what Madam Webb is all about. Who is Madam Webb? Two people, actually. The original Madam Webb to ever appear was Cassandra Webb, a blind, telepathic, clairvoyant, and precognitive mutant first appearing in Amazing Spider-Man number 210 in 1981, who suffered from a neuromuscular disease that gave her trouble moving and breathing on her own. This meant she relied on a life support system straight out of a, well, a comic book. It resembled a massive technological web. Using her powers, she would aid Spider-Man in his heroic endeavors. She gained immortality and lost her disability in the Ritual of the Five during the 90s and acted as a mentor to the third Spider-Woman, Maddie Franklin. After losing her life in a battle to Kraven the Hunter, she transfers her powers to the second and much younger Madam Web, Julia Carpenter. Julia has similar powers to Spider-Man, only psionic in nature. Both Julia and Cassandra have connection to the web of life and destiny, connecting them directly to the multiverse, and Dakota Johnson will be playing one or both of these characters in the new Madam Web movie. Thanks for Top 10 Nerd, letting us know what Madam Web is all about. And Dakota Johnson probably is not going to play the old iteration of Madam Web. She's going to be playing Cassie, Cassie Webb, which is going to be more of a new iteration. 
uh, kind of more with the psychic powers and all that. And her adversary in this thing is going to be Ezekiel Sims. If you don't know about him, here's a quick look at what he's going to be all about. Ezekiel Sims is a fascinating villain. He seeks out a secret tribe in Peru who possess inhuman strength and health. I've been searching for that spider for years. And these powers, they allow him to see into the future, including his own death. He becomes obsessed with finding his killers first. If you knew what I knew, you'd do the same thing. The question is, does knowing his future save him from it? And this story of Madam Webb is just going to confront her past going against this adversary who's looking for these spider powers. And she's going to be joined by three other spider women. And the story takes place in 2003. You've got people out here claiming woke, and I never buy into that because it doesn't matter to me. Um, I'm for diversity, inclusion, when it fits the story properly. If you got a good story, it's going to fit. So I think that that would work. But it almost feels as though the the film studio itself doesn't have a lot of faith in this movie. And on the same day that this movie drops, you also got competition from the um, Kingsley, I forgot his last name, movie dropping where he's going to be playing Bob Marley. So I want to hear from you guys. Will you go see this? I think I will go see it. A lot of people haven't liked the trailers. They felt like the trailer and the talking in the trailer was clunky. But I think that us nerds, we have such an affinity for our lure when it's good that we usually go support it even when the track record has been bad. So let me know if you're going to go see and Madam Webb and if this little clip has helped you have a better understanding of what she's all about. Last but ne definitely not least, ladies and gentlemen, we lost a legend and an icon in my man Carl Weathers. And if you don't know about this guy, take a quick look at this news clip that explains everything this man was all about. So many people talking about this. Of course, we are celebrating the life of actor Carl Weathers, whose death was revealed yesterday. He built a career on his iconic role, of course, of Apollo Creed in the Rocky movies. But it all started with a stint in pro football. ABC's Will Gans joins us now with more. Will, good morning. What a loss. What a talent. What a talent indeed. So, yes, you know that Carl Weathers played professional football, but what you might not know is that he was studying theater in the offseason, eventually earning a B.A. in drama. Hard work, no doubt, but worthwhile, of course. He made Rocky Rocky. What's the matter with you? Tomorrow. Let's do it tomorrow. There is no tomorrow. He made happy, happy. Golf's no different from hockey. Requires talent, self-discipline. Carl Weathers, the man who brought the motivation and the muscle to the big screen for more than 50 years. Born in New Orleans in 1948, Weathers started his professional career in the NFL, playing for the Oakland Raiders, helping them win the AFC West division title in 1970. He made the switch to acting, appearing in TV shows like Starsky and Hutch and Barnaby Jones throughout the 70s. But it was Rocky that made him a star. This is what I'm looking for. The Italian Stallion. During his audition, Weathers read with Sylvester Stallone and wasn't impressed, telling producers, I could do a lot better if you got me a real actor to work with. The team and Sly himself said it was exactly what Apollo Creed would do. And the rest is history. His family saying in a statement, Carl was an exceptional human being who lived an extraordinary life. Through his contributions to film, television, the arts, and sports, he has left an indelible mark and is recognized worldwide and across generations. Yes, sir, ladies and gentlemen, old school brother. Play football, Starsky and Hutch, Rocky, which made him a superstar in the first time I ever seen him. And then he was in Predator, and then he went on to do more and more film. He was special to me because of Rocky. I had the chance to see someone who looks like me and Rocky, black guy, chiseled kind of like a dad figure doing this thing in rocky best friends with sly stallone and speaking of sly stallone he had a whole lot to say about his feelings and his emotions toward his brother carl weathers take a look at how he got emotional in an interview he did just this past weekend hello everyone today is an incredibly sad day for me i mean i i'm so torn up i can't even tell you i'm just trying to hold it in because 
Carl Weathers was such an integral part of my life, my success, everything about it. I, I give him incredible credit and kudos because when he walked into that room and I saw him for the first time, I saw greatness, but I didn't realize how great. I never could have accomplished what we did with Rocky without him. He was absolutely brilliant. His voice, his size, his power, his athletic ability, but more importantly, his heart, his soul. It's, it, it's a horrible loss. And I'm standing here in front of this painting because it was probably the last moment we were ever in the ring together and I'll never forget it. He was magic. And I was so fortunate to be part of his life. So, Apollo, keep punch. So to the friends and family and all us fans that are going to miss Carl Weathers, we just want to say, I wish you guys the greatest of peace and mindset as you transition from this brother being just a standout human being acting in Hollywood. And now we have to live life without him. He holds a special place in my heart from my childhood, man, watching him in Rocky and Predator and just feeling the, the machismo, the macho-ness of that era. He was all that, and he's going to be sadly missed. So post your comments for me, ladies and gentlemen. Let me know how you feel about the passing of Carl Weathers. What was his favorite movie that he played in for you all? Don't forget to like the video, comment, subscribe. Please share my nerd news events as I'll be doing more and more of these as we're starting to get revved up into the nerd movie and TV show season. Lots of things are going to be coming out, and I'm going to stick with this report to make sure that we're keeping everybody up to date. And until that next Sexy as Hell video, I'll see you.